How can you be sure that when somebody looks at your report, they don't miss any of the important developments? Well, you can't really, unless you would have a list like this one, where you have automatically all of the important focus points. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set it up. Welcome to How to Power BI, my name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all of my videos in which I share everything I know about Power BI. When you have multiple people that look at the same report, or let's say the same chart like this one here, they don't always draw the same conclusions or might spot different things, and it might also overlook certain things. So my goal in this video is to create a way in which we automatically generate the most important developments for your main KPIs. Now in this chart, we are comparing the total sales for different product classes. Here we have regular, deluxe, and economy. And the light blue bars are for the current week sales and the dark blue ones are for the last week sales, the previous week sales. Now which week over week development for what product class is big enough so that we should focus on it? Well, with a measure, we can calculate the growth rates and then turn that into notification messages. For this, we will need a new measure and I already created a beginning here and I called the measure alerts. Now let's have a look. Now the alerts measure is gonna consist of four different parts. The very first part is where we have the notification values. So the values of the KPIs that you're tracking and on which you want to base the alerts. Then the second part is where we wanna check if the development, so here the week over week sales growth rate, is big enough so that we should focus on it. So whether or not we want to have a notification message for that product class or not. Then the third part, there we can add a little bit of text around the number so that we know what we're looking at and turn it into nice notification messages. Now, then in the very end, there we just want to combine all of the notifications for all of the items that we are checking the KPIs for. Now, in this case, that would be then the week over week sales growth rate percentages for regular, the looks and economy, the three different classes. All right. now. Let's get started. Now we want to go over these four steps for each product class. Now, how can we do that? Now here at the top, we're going to first of all, create a table that contains one column. And inside of that column, we have the three unique values in our product class column, regular, deluxe, economy. Now we can do this with all or all selected. Now all selected keeps filters from outside of the visual, for example, from the filters pane or slicers. So I'm gonna go for all selected. And then I want to have the class name column. All right, now let's select it. Now for each one of our classes, I want to perform these four steps. And this we can do with an iterator function. And the iterator function that we are gonna use is gonna be all the way at the top and is the concatenate X function. So let's select it, concatenate X which takes the table, a table that is returned by my all selected function. And for each of the product classes, I'm gonna have these four steps. Okay, so this is the beginning. Now for each one of our steps, I'm gonna create a variable to store the intermediate result, which makes everything a little bit easier, okay? So here, the very first variable for the notification values. Now here, the first KPI that we're going to have a look at is gonna be the week over week sales growth rate. So let's call this one value sales growth week over week. And this is equal to, and here I just referred to the measure that I already created before, which calculates that sales week over week growth rate. So over here we have total sales week over week growth percentage. Now here for you, this is of course going to be a completely different measure that returns the KPI value. That's the point, all right? So total sales week over week percentage is just an example. Okay, now I could leave it like this. However, I wanna have a little bit more control. So I'm gonna put this inside of a format function, all right? Where we can say how that value should be formatted. So I want to format it as follows. For this, we can use formatting strings. So I want to have it like this, 0.0, .0 percentage. All right, and let's maybe also put a plus sign in front of it for the positive values. And then for the negative values, that follows after that semicolon, we're going to have a minus sign, and then 0.0%. All right, now, if, if you find these formatting strings a little bit confusing, uh, just check out this video over here. Okay, so we have the formatting string there. 
then we can close that format function and go to the next step. Now, do we actually want to show a notification for, well, the value that we calculated there for a certain product class? Now, this depends on a certain threshold that you have to determine. So again, let's create a variable. So over here, we are going to have show then sales growth week over week. Now here we can just refer to our KPI measure. Now in this case, that is the week over week growth percentage. So this one here, and we want to check if that is over certain threshold. So let's say 5%, so 0 0.05. Now this growth percentage can be positive or negative. And of course, when it's a minus 10% is also something that I want to know. So just to make sure that that one will also be included, we can make use of the absolute function. All right, so that when we would have minus 10%, well, it would return 10% there. Then it would be bigger than that 5%. So uh, the notification later on will also show. So this second variable will either be true or false, whether we want to show a message or not for a certain product class. Okay, now let's go to step three. Here we can create our nice notification messages. All right, now let's create another variable and let's call this one message sales growth week over week. And here, of course, we want to return, first of all, the value for the sales growth week over week. However, now we can put a little bit of text around it. Now, one of the things that we probably need is what class, what product class are we actually looking at? So we can just refer here to the class name in the dim product table. Now, there's row context because we are using concatenate X. We go row by row over that table that's returned by all selected, which just contains basically one column with three values, uh, regular, deluxe, and economy. Okay, so we take the class name and we want to combine that with maybe some empty space. And then we can write here sales week over week and combine that with the value in the end. Then for the very last part, we want to combine all of the notification messages for all of the product classes. All right, now here we can also have a variable. Let's call this one notification. All right, and we can make use of an if function and we can say if. Now, first of all, the logical test, which is the, well, the variable that says whether we want to show the message or not. Okay, so show sales growth week over week, true or false. All right, now, if it's true, then what do we want to return? We want to return the notification message. So over here, message sales growth week over week. All the way at the end, because we are using variables, we also have to use the return statement. So we have to say, okay, return, and then the notification. All right, now, let me indent this, and then close the brackets for the concatenate X function. Now. This gives us our starting point. Now let's see if it works. I'm going to take my alerts measure and I'm going to drag it onto a table visual. And you see, it kind of works. We have different notification items, some text, some numbers, however, it looks a bit messy. So therefore we have to go back to the measure and here after the message sales growth week over week, there I would like to add a Unicar character that goes to the next line, so line break. So we just Unicar 10. And that already looks much better. So for each class, you see we have a separate line. Okay, now another thing that could improve the readability a little bit is when we would add, for example, here, something like a hyphen in front of it. Now we have to use the ampersand to combine it with the value. Now, that would look like this, still not great, we can do better. So let's go back once more. We can put some spaces around it and maybe instead of a hyphen, let's go for like a dot in the middle. So with the windows keys, so with windows and then the dot, the period key, you can get all of the symbols. And then from here, I go to the second last one, punctuation, and over here, there we have the dot, all right choose it, and that's what I want to have, a bullet point. Okay, now let's see how that looks like. And I think that already looks quite a bit cleaner. Good, that works. Now let's see what happens when we play around with the thresholds. So let's go back. And instead of this 0 0.05, let's say we are only interested if it's above 10%, right? So 0 0.10 or 0 0.1. Then you see we only have a notification for the product classes economy 
and regular. The looks doesn't show up anymore because it was nine point something. Okay, so we only see notifications, alerts for the relevant product classes. Okay, so now we have it working for our first KPI. Uh, so the performance of the current week sales versus last week sales. But what if we want to add another measure to this? So another KPI that we want to check the development for. For example, we could also have a look at the current week sales versus the same week last year's sales. Now let me take the measure for total sales current week last year, and I'm just gonna put it in between the last week and the current week sales in my chart. And then let's go for a different color. So over here, columns. And this one we can make light blue. Okay, so now that we integrated the current week last year measure into our chart, let's go back to our alert measure and also integrate it over there. Now, how can we update this alert measure? Well, we basically need to do the same thing for the next measure. So for the next measure, we have to calculate again the notification values, whether we want to show the notifications, the notification messages, and then combine it. Now, so let me do that quickly for you. So let me clap my hands and there you go. Now that looks complex, but it follows the same logic. You see over here, we have the value sales growth, current week CW versus CW, uh, current week last year, CWLY. Well, here again, I use the format function to format it using that formatting string. Then we have over here the logic, when do we want to show it, all right? And here we can decide on the cutoff points. So for example, here we had 0.10, and then over here, I can go for 0.50. All right, then the notification messages. So here we can put some text around it. Now, of course, the only thing that I updated here is just, well, the name that I want to have in front of it. Uh, so over here, sales, current week versus current week last year. All right, and then here at the end, there we just combine all of the notifications, if there is one, for that product class. Okay, so the rest of the whole logic is exactly the same. And if we have KPI 3, well, we just have to go over the four steps again. And the list of notifications, of course, keeps on increasing, also depending on uh, the thresholds that you choose. For example, if I would increase this threshold to, let's say, 0 0.15, then we have probably a notification less. No. Have a look, and indeed, we only have now three notification items economy sales, week over week growth rate plus 17 percent. Then we have the current week versus current week last year plus 99, and current week versus current week last year for the deluxe class plus 85 percent. Okay, so that seems to be working. However, usually on a report page, you do not just have one chart, you have multiple charts. So, what then? Well, let's add another chart. So for example here, sales by manufacturer. Exactly the same what I'm showing here, the same measures. However, we have it now broken down by manufacturer. Okay, now how could we update our alert measure so that it would also check all of these things for that other chart? Okay, now let's go back and now we can just copy the whole measure, except the measure name, control C, and now I'm just going to combine that with well, kind of the same thing, but here we are not going to take the class name. We want to have the manufacturer. Okay, and what else do we need to update? Well, here we have class name. There we have class name. We just need to update that with the new field, manufacturer, because we want to do these four steps now for the manufacturer instead of the class name. Okay, so that's basically it. Now, just formatting. Right, so here, just to make sure that we continue on a new line, I have to put in here a Unicard 10. And then also there at the end, we need an ampersand sign, all right? And just to make sure that we separate the two parts, maybe here all the way at the top, I would do something like this. Maybe also put a Unicard 10, it looks a little bit cleaner, okay? And then we're going to say, here we have the class alerts, all right, so class alerts. Okay, then we continue on the next line. So Unicard 10 again, all right. And then we can just copy this all the way down over here. And there we can then change class to manufacturer. And after we have updated our measure, you see it nicely gets reflected in our alert message. And we have now also alerts for the field manufacturer. And what if there's another field that gets added for which you wanna set up the alerts? Well, then you just have to update the measure again in the same way we did it for manufacturer.
So with these notification alerts showing on the side of a report, we can be sure that nobody's gonna miss any important developments in the KPIs. Now as a last finishing touch for our notification alerts, let's take the table and let's show something different in the header. So we can just double click there on the field alerts. And then at the beginning, I'm gonna say this week's alert. All right, and maybe here, all the way at the beginning, we can also put in a symbol or an icon. So let's do the Windows key, period. And then here I'm gonna search for the Glock icon, which is this bell basically. And then let's see how that looks. I see it looks a bit more interesting and that's it. Now this way we can be sure that nobody's gonna miss any important developments uh, for your KPIs that are showing in your charts. However, sometimes might be hidden or missed by people, okay? Now, the downside, however, is that at the moment, well, these notification alerts showing a table that takes quite a bit of space, all right? Now, is there a smarter way of integrating this in your report? Well, we can make use of tooltips. Now, maybe you watched my previous video over here in which I show you how to set up a notification bell and when there's a notification, with something that you want to share with team members, you can just hover over that bell and it shows you all of the most recent notifications. Now, we can set up something similar for our example, right? So uh, we can create a tooltip page, so something like this one over here. And on that tooltip page, we just copy over the table that we just created. That's it, all right? And once you have that tooltip page, well, then you can go to your report when you want to integrate it. Now let's take this one as an example, where we also have the sales by class and sales by manufacturer. And you see, I integrated that, uh, that notification bell. And when I hover over it, well, it shows that tooltip that has the table that we created before with all of the alerts. And the nice thing is also that these measures, these iterative functions, well, if you have a lot of manufacturers, well, it could take quite a bit to calculate, but it will only run when, well, the custom tooltip has to show. Okay, so maybe a smarter way of integrating it into your report. All right, this is it. This is how you can set up notification alerts for your report so that nobody ever again will miss any important KPI developments. Now, maybe you have some more ideas. Well, just let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you have any questions, just let me know. If you're interested of integrating more report elements like this one, just check out these videos over here. I wanna thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.